Take it away, Lost Guy Singers. Patriot Tribal Time calling all dancers. can hear you. The water has memory.
Nibi. Nibi. Wabo. Wabo. Endayan. Endayan. Water is the life's blood of our mother, the earth. Water is the lifeblood of our own body. continue to pass on the knowledge that needs to be given unto the other generations. You are the keeper of the water. make the change in this life condition that we're in, that great-grandchildren will stand up to, to this truth of what life is about and, and to live it in such an honorable way, the way ancestors came, came to this earth. Each day when the sun rises, no matter how bad the day before might have been, there's a new chance for your hopes and dreams. And I say, Chi Miigwech, thank you for singing the water song. And what's your name? Harry Laporte. And you are? I'm the Grand Chief of the St. John River Indians. So you've been in St. Mary's all, all, all your life? I've been in St. Mary's for the last 48 years. Boy, am I ever talking to the right person? You've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. You've seen the St. Mary's go from down to up and I up see. down. I've seen St. Mary's go from the bottom to the top. So, what's your opinion on St. Mary's in the year 2013? My own feelings, in my own heart, I feel that St. Mary's is the number one uh, native community in the province. I've always told people that. And it's, uh, come, come look at our community. See, see how far we've come. See our, uh, our businesses and, and our, our way of life. It's, it's a marvelous place.
Come on, Daddy! I like your chief. I like my chief too. Oh, she's a... She's a, she's a strong-hearted woman. Mm. Dedicated. Dedicated. Committed. And she's, she's a good woman. You've seen governments, I've seen New Brunswick governments. governments. Yes, You've seen it in, in your uh, community and here. What do you think of this mess? I think this mess could be uh, could have been averted. I think uh, it still could be if uh, if all governments could get together and, and sit down and talk it out. Talk it out. Talk it out. That's what we need to do is talk to one another. It's an old-fashioned thing, but sometimes the old-fashioned way is the best. How do you see this ending? I really don't know how it's going to end. I, I don't, in my, myself, I don't know how it's going to end, uh, but there will be an end, eventually, somehow. But we got to talk. That's all. That, that's all. That's the first thing is we got to talk.
My name is Delbert Moulton. I'm from the Tubic First Nation. I teach at Southern Victoria High School in Perth, Hanover. I teach grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. I also teach Native Studies to uh, grade 12 and grade 11 students. My name is Molly Brown. I'm from Tobik First Nation. I am a teacher at Perth Hanover Middle School and I teach grades 6, 7, and 8. I'll state language and culture. Well, for one thing, we uh, were uh, not allowed to use our language and we used our language still back in the late 60s. We were punished. This would be 1967, 68. So it was frowned upon to use your language and even talking Mount Seed in, in a hallway. And a lot of kids dropped out of school because uh, for one thing they couldn't speak French. And then kids in grade 8, grade 9, by the time they reached grade 9, they would have dropped out. So the number of kids in high school, I think I started with five. My grad, I was the only graduate from that class in 1971. Ice wouldn't be here when I was younger. And well, we had a school right up until grade six. Then you had to go into town for, for uh, middle and high school. And now, well, it's still the same thing, but at least kids are more accepted into the... Uh... You know, like, who you are and who you are as a person and where you come from, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main problem with our kids, too. They don't know who they are, who they belong to, and they come from different homes. And to have that sense of culture and language, it makes them feel... Proud. proud and makes them feel whole, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, and even our schools are incorporating it in our daily like routines. Like, oh, Canada is, is in Maliseet, it's not in English. So almost every day. Yeah. L'hiver, nos quartiers d'hiver étaient à ce moment-là le fleuve Saint-Jean et nos quartiers d'été, la rive sud, près du fleuve, où la, la pêche, le, la nourriture ici, ont quitté, ont déserté le territoire ancestral. Parce que, parce que nous étions des chasseurs cueilleurs nomades et la déforestation, combinée à l'obligation des, des colons blancs, de se nourrir, ils devaient cultiver la terre. Donc, mm. ce faisant, ils ont créé des prairies et ils ont euh, fait disparaître nos sources de nourriture qui étaient le gibier. On se nourrissait exclusivement de gibier, de, de poissons et de cueillettes. Donc, c'est ça qui a provoqué le diaspora des Mélicites. Puis, on avait obtenu en 1827 un territoire qui s'appelait la réserve de Vigé, qui est un territoire qui avait d'environ de, 3000 ans qui avait été réservé, parce que c'était une terre de réserve, mais ce principe-là n'existait pas encore à ce moment-là, les réserves telles qu'on les connaît aujourd'hui. Euh, et on a rétrocédé la réserve par euh, un genre de référendum bidon, et puis ces terres-là ont été revendues aux colons blancs pour qu'ils prennent de l'expansion. Il faut dire à l'époque, ces terres-là faisaient l'envie aussi de, de, des colons européens, et... et et il disait que les Malécites ne s'en occupaient pas, 
euh, négligeaient le défrichage, négligeaient leur terre parce que l'automne, l'appel de la chasse était plus fort que tout. Donc, c'était, euh, on y allait. On a perdu notre langue, notre spiritualité, notre culture, nos us et coutumes. Euh, on a perdu même un mode de vie complètement prématurément parce qu'on aurait pu perpétuer jusqu'à aujourd'hui si on avait gardé des lieux communs, un espace pour euh, communiquer et partager. Pour essayer de reconquérir, reconquérir des terres et créer une activité, euh, créer des activités euh, tant économiques que culturelles pour redonner le, 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 aux membres de la nation malécite, leur redonner le, 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 le goût ou l'intérêt pour leur nation et pour leur culture, pour leur histoire. Ça, je pense, c'est bien important. Il y a peut-être 20 ans, nous, nous étions peut-être 300 400 Aujourd'hui, nous sommes à 1650, proche 1700. Puis, euh, je vous dirais, presque une fois par mois, on a toujours quelques demandes euh, de nouveaux membres, soit des gens qui ont retrouvé leur, leur origine ou leur intérêt aussi, euh, tout en sachant de leur, leur origine, leur intérêt à faire partie. Long ago, there was a story about how the elders had moved. This is long ago when huge animals roamed the earth and um, there were water dragons in our rivers. We call them, our, the name is Abu Dumpkin, the water dragon. Long ago when uh, this was how our world looked, our ancestors moved from a western area eastern towards the the light towards the the sunrise you know there are stories about you know, when you have your your village then you know the men would go away and hunt for months at a time and so there are trees that are very tall that will have carvings of the hunters on them and you climb at the top they're probably trees that have their marking on them. I think it's so fascinating. The Malseats are from uh, the Wabanaki, which means people of the white light or people of the dawn. Wabanaki. Waban is white light and Aki, Aki is people of, so it's people of the white light. We have an artist, Ursula Bear, within uh, Tobik First Nations that recreated an ancient wampum belt that talks about that gathering of the four Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Mi'kmaq, Maliseet that talks about that, that confederacy. So this would be a wampum belt. Cultural keys of resilience for the Maliseets. There are also cultural keys for everybody on the face of this earth. That we, you, it begins with uh, ourselves, who we are, and having that support around and having, being part of something. That, and that's pretty much all there is. Only you can define you. And once you have defined you, then whatever anyone else feels or thinks is irrelevant. And that's how we build resilience. That's how we continue to maintain our culture. Because healing and true success does not happen until you know who you are, until you love yourself. Once you love yourself, and you can define yourself, 
then a wonderful life begins. A healing journey begins. And our ancestors knew that. It is okay to be First Nations. It is okay to define yourself. It is okay to make a statement about who you are and how you want to live in this world. In our First Nations community, there is no inequality between men and women. There is no inequality between children and men and women. All of us are a creation. There is no inequality between animals, a rock, the air, the river, or the sunlight. All has a significance in and is part of the world. There, it, there is not a uh, schematic um, way of looking at the world. Um, we look at um, ceremony as being a very um, uh, important part of a cleansing and being an uh, important part of, of um, who we are. And I found that over the years that it wasn't always there. Like in the 50s when I was born, um, there was still uh, a wave in the air of, oh, you can't do that because the Catholic Church is not in favor of that. Marvel. Wait. 
喂。